links if you prefer to use the electronics to make sure that everyone has access to the they like. I'm very local, I like pen and paper. Um, so those are here for you too. The charges over there on the table, um, there should be the, the one that's current and active, the 2018 version, and then there's the newer charge. <coughs> And that's the one that we're discussing today that was brought to EODC last year and was, is on your website as a draft. Um, the other piece is the, the agenda uh, is all on the EODC website if that's easier for you, but if you want a paper copy, it's over there. And, oh, the Racial Climate Task Force document, that is on the website and is over there. Lorena, I'm with the Rising Scholars Program and I'm class of voting. Oh, voting member. <laughs> Diana Alcala, I am the program manager for the Rising Scholars Program and I am a voting member. Matthew Garrett, a professor of history and I'm a voting member. Catherine Jones, professor of occupational safety and risk management, voting member. Angela Williams, our advisor and outreach in early college and a voting member. Uh, Harlan Hunter, criminal justice professor, voting member. Tiffany, Jennifer Achan, um, executive director of financial and scholarships, and I'm a voting member. Tiffany Sagmohan, uh, program manager for public safety and public safety training, <laughs> and I'm a voting member. Paula Parks, uh, English department, and I'm an alternate. Anthony Vasquez, um, from the state government. Southwest campus, uh, voting member. Reggie Bolton, Dean of Instruction and Athletics, uh, voting member. Jennifer Judd, Dean of Instruction. Am I voting member? I'm voting No, voting member. Okay, we're going to clarify it. Deborah Osorio Thorson. Uh, I represent the Communication Department and I'm voting member. Adjunct faculty. Adjunct faculty, voting member. Jimena uh, Silva, I'm a uh, professor of chemistry. Uh, Voting number for physical science. Gilbert Ayuk, uh, physics instructor, and science for tennis. Oh, tennis. Science for tennis. So we hear what you say. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So, the first thing we want to do is take notice that our president is here today. 
Um, we also have our Senate president that is going to be here. So I'd like to, let's get started with letting him share with us some words of wisdom. I know. You know, it's, it's fascinating that we just built this building and now we're getting into rooms that we already do practice. We need something more. So I think like we need measure J.2 or something to start. Um, thank you all for being over here today. It is critical to see the number of people who are interested in this committee. It is an important uh, shared governance or participatory governance group that works to advise me and our team in terms of the direction of DEI work that we need to take on in, in our college. There is always going to be some people who will have different perspectives about diversity. That is the reality of the world we live in. And I'm not here to persuade you to take one perspective over another. That is not my role. I'm here to tell you what we do in California Community Colleges. And from the perspective of the California Community Colleges and the 116 colleges around our state, the state chancellor's office gives us the guidance in terms of our DEI work. And I would hope that each of you takes a critical look at the work that the state chancellor's office has been doing over the last three or four years. Many of their vision for success goals are embedded in diversity work. And the way that they define diversity is a shared model that they're trying to get everybody across the state to buy into. Now, you can say, I don't believe in that, and that's fine. I'm looking for what the collective view is for this committee because I think that's what's important about any governance process. The definition of disadvantaged students, disproportionately impacted community members, those are definitions that are built based upon statistics and based upon data and facts. And I would hope that when you're considering all of those different elements, you take data into into consideration because that's what this is all about, right? Um, the other thing that I have to tell you, just from my perspective, my own personal way of operating, I think it's okay for us to disagree. I think it's healthy for us to disagree. Paul and I sometimes disagree, Jennifer and I sometimes disagree, but we always disagree agreeably. And that, to me, is really important. And I hope that in the work that you do, you try to lift one another up. Because the alternative is meeting one another down. And nobody wins in that. I mean, I think all of you have to buy into that, that perspective because these are difficult conversations to, to have and putting any one person down or two people down or groups of people down doesn't behoove us. The question is how can we work together to enlift our most disadvantaged student populations and our communities. Um, so those are my two pieces of advice. I hope that you engage in this thing by, uh, by incorporating those in your work. I'm not here to be a hall monitor. My job over here is to encourage everybody and to get out of here. So I've done my piece, I think, uh, unless anyone has a, another request for me, I'm going to say bye. And see you all later. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Andrea? Um, I noticed during the introductions, 18 people identified as voting members, and then Dave walked in making 19, but only 15 are on the charge. So I just want to make sure we were we knew who really are the voting members and got it figured out before we vote on anything. While I double-check the names and the checkboxes, if you want to review the documents on the website or the documents in front of you, just those um, And then, mm -hmm. there a copy of that? Right over here. Right. Perfect. I think identifying the voting members is 
like not a minor thing, because I have one committee charge where there's 18 people on it, one committee charge where there's 28 people on it, and a new draft charge with 33 people on it. So, so the, the charge, you were, were, it's on the agenda, and we're going to get to that. The, yeah. Which one is the old version? And it's, it's also in the email, which one's the old version right. and the one that we're functioning with. It's also on the website, and they're from us. So they're old, the, old, the current one that we're actively using, in the, if you want to bring up my email for ease of use, 18. Um, or if you want to bring up the website for ease of use, or if you want to look at it up, if it gets too much because they're all black and white. And then the, the new charge is the one that's, that's in it, also in the email, and then it's also on the website as under the last meeting, the new draft. So if you want to take a look at that. And actually, what I probably, I could probably suspend the agenda and just like all of you for presentations while I do this one. The second one they passed, it wasn't approved. Which now they're bringing back one of those to be voted on today, I think. no matter what race, 
felt that they mattered or strongly mattered with professors of color and they experienced more concern from professors of color and that shows that what, whatever we're doing in terms of hiring faculty of color, all student groups are pleased. What bothered me was the racial stress that our students are feeling. So looking at the report, if we look at feelings of loneliness, not belonging, or isolation, 42% of students of color felt that versus 26% of white students. Decline in academic performance as a result of racial stress, how it impacted their personal well-being. Students of color, 31%. White students, 18%. So since we are about student success and we see that our students are suffering due to the racial stress that they are feeling, that bothers me. Race-based physical aggression, black students 14%, white students 2%. Race-based verbal attack, black students 20%, two or more races 17%, white students 7%. So our students of color are having two different experiences on this campus. Experiencing jokes. Our students are more likely to experience that, more likely to have to speak for the entire race. Our students are more likely to experience that. And since we are about student success, since we care about our students, I feel that those things need to be looked into further. The recommendations were to establish a campus climate committee. They recommended more dialogue, more discussion among students and the whole community. This task force is larger than any group that we have. It would include counseling as recommended in the recommendations, professional development, student activities, HR, and the community because students of color are more likely to feel aggression off of campus. The task force itself, we do all have a copy of that. It's been through several drafts. The goal would first be to look at the climate survey, gather more information from students and from other um, surveys that we've done, and create a more cohesive, welcoming community for students and to create healthy collegial dialogue across the campus. Increase cultural awareness and appreciation, create an emotionally and physically safe environment for students. So this is about students. This is about caring about their success, caring about their experiences. They're about the students that you see in this room and caring about their success. What's interesting is that CSUB did a similar survey and had similar concerns and they're forming a task force. Because when you get results that concern you and your priority is students, you look into it. You look into it and you do something about it because we're here for our students. I'll take any questions. Yes, I got that. Um, you know, some of the things that were brought out in the survey that was presented in the Senate and back in um, you know, the AC, um, it, we're using data. The, the, the data that we're using is with questions, and I don't feel that those questions have been answered appropriately. One is whether this is a representative sample of our student population. This survey was um, administered during COVID. These students were not on campus. 
and we had a very low um, um, response rate. It was 1,300 approximately out of our 33,000 or so uh, 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 student body. There's a specific question where um, there, was, uh, there was one question, and there were several actually. What some of us question is, the way that these questions are written is they're leading students to, to answer a certain way, to collect that, that data. Like, if I look at that, at that survey as a scientist, I could not possibly have done a better job at designing a survey to get the results that I'm looking for, as opposed to the actual real data. For example, the question that's asked, do you feel that your uh, professor of color versus your white professor, just by asking questions as white versus of color, we're already making something about race that might not be about race. So the, the question that I still have about the survey is, you know, are we going to get the question answered about how is this considered a, a representative sample for all the students? And finally, I'd just like to just essentially honestly get this off my chest. Why are we using a morality argument? Like, you, you, this, okay, we're bringing students. We, we're all here because we care about our students. That's really so uh, 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 much of us. So to bring in students and say, we care about the, the, the students, and the students have to be represented. It's like, well, we have student voices at every single committee in this college. So is that not appropriate? So then should we change those instead? Because then it, it, it's a morality cudgel. And I, I'm, I'm sorry, it's, why are we doing this to each other? Like, because now anybody who opposes this can just say, well, you don't care about student success. No, we question the solutions of the problems. We question even the problems that you're saying that we have. Anyway. There are some hands up. So I have, I can respond to that. Sure. So when Craig came to, to the board, he said it was a typical response rate. The students who responded, there were 1,442 students, which he called, quote unquote, a good size. The race distribution was close to what we have, and he said that full-time faculty were overrepresented. Everything else was representative. Okay. My question uh, is, uh, this has been done throughout the state, right, at different colleges, these questions, right? 40 plus colleges. Okay, yes. so are your questions any different than theirs uh, to find out this information? We need our mic. I mean, are we using basically the same questioning throughout the state? Yes, it's the exact same. Exact same. Yes, so, yes. so that that takes away your argument. It's we're saying that we want to have a representation. It's just not of this campus, but it's of the state campuses it's because it's being sent out everywhere. So, in that, when you look at the representative sample, our sample is basically, if I understood you correctly, and please correct me if I'm wrong is that we are basically in line with other institutions in the state and that as a whole, uh, colleges need to work on this. Right. Yes, he called it a typical response rate. Quote okay, unquote. all right, thank you. I think you had your hand first. Catherine? Just because everybody else in the state used the same survey doesn't make the questions right. I just got, so saying th that that proves Jimena wrong was that was, not true, because well, her would, point was correct. The people who made the questions were a committee that tried to make it as equitable as possible on the question level, Throughout and that the they were the proud state, state of California. So, uh, I mean, these aren't just people that we randomly say and make up some damn questions. These are people who have, uh, you know, some kind of scholarly background in this area. So, I mean, to fight the questions, I don't. I think it's a waste of time. I think the whole thing here is we need to look at what the problem is and go forward. Um, minutia holds back committees. You need to get to the solution, not fight the process. For so time. my we actual agree on the problem before we can come up with a solution. I yeah. think so that's basically yeah, on that. Was, Catherine, Catherine did respond, you know, respond yeah. to you, so you responded, but let's yeah. finish that. So it, in the academic summit discussions last year, and in the in these discussions last year, there was a, a lot that was brought up about the validity of the questions and the data and the sample size and the self-selecting nature of all of that. Um, my greatest concern with the task force is that it's doing the work that this committee's supposed to be doing. 
And so why have 15 more people do work that's supposed to be done by this group? And under, regardless of which version of the charge you're looking at, it's still fundamentally the, the work of this group. I can respond to that. This is larger than this group. It involves counseling per the recommendations. Counseling, professional development, student activities, HR, and the larger community. Part of all of your charges include, let's see, uh, bullet point, collaborating with local community committees and task forces. So part of what you're charged to do is work with other task force. This is a task force that is larger than this group. It includes more. It wouldn't be appropriate for counseling to do it because it involves, it's bigger than that. It's bigger than professional mm -hmm. development. It's bigger than student activities. It's bigger than HR. It's bigger than EODC. It's bigger than a community group. It includes all of those. I apologize, Reggie, if I skipped you. Um, I think we're, everybody's stating the, the obvious point here. We, we're not doing the work. You're right. That committee's gonna do the work of the, of this committee. The problem is with this committee is we're spending too much time dissecting data, challenging processes, challenging procedures, and we're not doing the work. So I, I applaud Paula for trying to start a committee, a group that will actually do the work. Because at this point, we're spending so much time process, charge, who's got voting rights, and, and the data is the data. And as a scientist, you guys make a lot of decisions based off that. And so to make the statement that these questions are leading, when we just, she just established that there's 40 other colleges doing the same thing, the data is the data. And you can pull it from any data source you want. The same data says the same thing, whether it's at this college or any other college in the state. Students are still suffering. Students of color are suffering. Students overall are suffering. So if we go spend all our time, like we did last year on this committee, challenging the data, challenging the charge, challenging processes, because everybody's trying to maneuver to get their agenda across, the students are suffering. So I agree with you. It is not wrong to bring students in here, because we're sitting in this room making decisions what's in the best interest of these students. They need to have a voice. They really do. And I think sometimes we're not even hearing the students. That data says the students have a voice. So let's listen to the data, what the student's saying, and do something about it and help them be successful. Because at the end of the day, the people in this room the, that are working, it's not about our success, it's about their success. So we can spend, and this is exactly where we went last year on this committee. We're, we're back to that set. We're going to challenge the data, challenge all these things. Let's just do the work, people. Students are suffering, and let's help them be successful. And it's all students. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying just the students of color. Because anything we put into place will help benefit every single student on this campus. Because mm -hmm. right now, it ain't even about color. We're challenging mindset right. in this room. We're challenging mindset in this room. Matt, you were next. Well, <clears throat> I'm concerned about repeated appeals to popularity as evidence of truth. I know you teach that in your class, that that's bad logic. Um, I'm also concerned about appeal to authority that I hear arguing that that's where truth is coming from. Um, what we do need to answer that question of if the questions and what the group that made them, that's a valid question. We should, and I remember we heard this at some point, who developed this questionnaire? And I can't remember if it was the USC Equity Organization, or, or, but, but who organized the questions and do they have a biased interest? Because that is a valid question. And if it was a biased partisan group, well, that might explain some of the concerns. Now, um, so I think that's a valid exploration. Also, um, because it was taken at a hot spot in a little strange window of time that's very unusual, I do think it would be appropriate to do another survey to see if what sort of data we get because um, Craig said this in his presentation that it's really just a little shot of a glance of a quick shot of what we saw. And so, you know, it's been another year or so. I think it'd be a great time to do another survey. People are back on campus. Let's see what students think now, what sort of environment they're in. So I'd love to see more data. Um, also, my concern about the survey is less about the data and more about 
the recommendations it makes. There's a huge gap between the data it observes and the recommendations it makes. And the data doesn't support a lot of those recommendations. For example, one of the recommendations was a safe space, I recall. Well, there's a lot of data that suggests that the safe space places actually create more con com problems, more um, animosity, that some students are resentful that they exist. Some they, there's, there's a very good argument that that's going to take us in the opposite direction. So I love to see evidence that connects the observed data with the actual solutions that are recommended because I see a huge gap between them. Um, and then another issue is we keep hearing that this, this committee isn't large enough to meet the needs of this proposed task force. Well, the only reason the proposed task force is so large is because it's being proposed as so large. There's nothing written anywhere that says that the proposed task force needs to be this massive. Why couldn't the proposed task force be five, six, seven, eight people out of the ODAC who or represent different constituencies, who do the, the work, and that's what subcommittees usually work. Usually a committee makes a subcommittee to move forward. So to create some outside external things seems a little bit odd and unusual. Um, uh, and it's really farming out a lot of the work that we should be doing. You know, I think that um, if you look back, going all the way back to Jimena and how she had indicated that 1,300 of our students had voted on this survey, um, and this survey was taken during COVID, um, and she said that it's, she implied that that wasn't enough students answering the question on the survey uh, or participating in the survey. But you sit here and you have to think about 33,000 students and only 1,300 answered the questions for the surveys. That doesn't count. 33,000 students is Inmate Scholar Program, which is now the Rising Scholars. They don't get an email with the survey to their BC account because they don't have access to that. Um, you also have high school students that are participating um, and our dual enrollment. They don't get to vote. However, the students that did get to vote and voted through a statewide survey that was proposed to 40 other colleges, their vote and their survey has to count for what it is that they're feeling on campus. We can't undermine just because enough, not enough of our students voted. Our students voted and they told us what they are experiencing and what they are going through when they are in classrooms on this campus. We need to take that into consideration. I agree with Dr. Parks. I agree wholeheartedly that there needs to be a task force that takes this into consideration and that we move forward and we stop wasting time. I've only been on this committee for about five months and every single month that we met last spring was a waste of time because again we kept going in circles everybody keeps questioning people are saying we don't you're not giving me enough time to speak you you've had the floor for 40 minutes how have you not had enough time to speak and get your point out we get it you question every single thing that comes to the table and you don't want to move forward we're being unproductive and the only people who are hurting here are our students I apologize. I didn't realize the co-chairs had their hands up for a while <laughs> because they were, and so I am so sorry. Rich first, and then Vicki. I think uh, uh, you know, I'm listening to the, the arguments about data, and I, I heard the same arguments at, when they presented the data. Um, I think that uh, the, the purpose of what Paula is bringing forward on the task force, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this really is coming from academic senate to see do we agree that you should have a task force. Um, I think that um, uh, just given the discussion, whether it's the, the validity of the data or not, those kinds of things, that raises that consciousness to a task force. The other, the other thing that I want to talk about is the comment that the work is at this committee. Um, all DEI work and anti-racism work is not at this committee. It's across campuses. And when an entity says, we need a task force to look at this, I think that um, we should fully support that, and it would, it would be my recommendation. In fact, I, I would look for a motion to support Paula and her effort to establish. I second the motion. So what do you say? I vote to vote. Yes. Yes. We've already. Yes. I move to vote. Is there a second? I second. Okay. And then Vicky, you still. 
No. Okay. Okay. So I, we have a motion and a second to vote. Um, I need the voting members. I went through it three times. Um, but um, according to what I've got here, for so we, again, we have a lot of people that are here as um, a proxy or an alternate. So for classified individuals, I've got Maria and Angela and Dominica and Vicky. That's what I double checked on everything as voting members. If someone disagrees, please articulate it now. It's Vicky, you said? Vicky Coffee? Yes. But as a chair? Okay, she I'm sorry. Vote. Right, but isn't that separate from the. I forget, do they, is there only three classified plus the chair? There's only three classified Great. plus Great, okay, I was wrong, sorry. Um, okay, for administrative co-chair, we've got Rich, and then we've got Reggie and Jennifer Aitchin as voting members. So the other individuals, we appreciate you to be here, the classified and admin that are here. You don't have a boy vote today, but you always have a voice. Um, Could you repeat those names? Reggie and Jennifer A. And then we've got from adjunct faculty, Deborah Thorson. Your alternate is not here. Um, I am the co-chair for faculty. I've got Jimena down for her area and her proxy is her alternate is here, so he won't be voting today. She's voting today. Matt Garrett, your alternate. Um, I don't think your alternate is here. Um, but you get your vote today. Harlan Hunter, yes. your vote today. Catherine Jones, your vote today. Jill Saldivar, Teresa, oh, Lily is um, the alternate for Teresa and is the proxy today for Teresa. Murad? Murad. Oh, that's right. And his proxy. <laughs> 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 okay, and then David Neville, who had to drive quite a bit. We have some cute dogs that he trained. You have your vote today. So it's one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. That's the adjunct. Yes, so all my math adds up. If anyone disagrees, now's the time, not later, to create some sort of trauma drama that I do not hate. Okay, so everyone's name I said, you're a voting member. Please, everyone else, again, we appreciate you being here, but please don't vote at this time. And then as we go, what I'm probably just going to do, because I do know that there's even I don't know some of the people in this room, I've been here over 16 years, I'll probably just call your name unless people feel very uncomfortable with that. Just vote. So the motion on the table is vote to approve Paula's task force. May I have a couple clarification? Sure. Is, is this the first time uh, that EODAC has been presented with basically the, 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 the tasks of the task force? EODAC was brought the information last year, I thought. Yes, no. but, the, 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 but it's changed slightly based on like being stuck in E4 for six months, she went and changed according correct. to what they wanted. Correct. So yes, this is the first time here. So um, then, um, I, then I, I, well, I don't know if then this is the time, if this is the first time presented as this, I, I would support that this be a first reading and then um, a vote at that next one. I completely hear you. Uh, at eboard, however, a vote was taken that not only did we need to look at this and make the finding, but I had to bring that finding of support or lack thereof to the next Senate meeting, which is also why I didn't want to make changes and make things because I was told that this is what we, we have to look at it. We've got to have a perspective to bring them moving forward at the next meeting. So the other thing I will say is that second readings are nice to have. I think generally the work is, is really nice to have that way. However, there are some things that are rather urgent, just like we did in Senate. We did a budget vote last time with a first read. This is not a Brown Act committee. That also, just to clarify that for everyone, I did make sure I double checked with legal and everybody. This is not a Brown Act committee, so we don't have the obligation for it, but it's certainly an option. Does that clarify for everyone? Does Joe withdraw? Okay. All right, so I'm going to start with classify. Oh, and we have a student. You are replaced, you are a proxy. Uh, your name. Yeah. Okay, Anthony, I'm going to start with you. Do you vote to approve? I vote to approve. Maria? Approve. Angela? I vote to approve. Dominica? I vote to approve. Vicki? Approve. David? Can I ask a question? Not now, but. <laughs> okay. Come on, Dan, have discussion. <laughs> <laughs> that is me. 
I'm just conflicted a little bit on this. Um, yes. I'm going to abstain on this. Okay. Vote uh, oh, to approve for Marat. Teresa is Lily. Oh, wow. What did they do be a proxy? Um, <laughs> I, too, feel some, although I, I applaud the, the charge of. Which is a vote. We can't have we can't have comments. Sorry. I, I have to abstain at this point. Joe Salvador? No. Catherine Jones? No. Harlan Hunter? Approved. Matthew Garrett? No. Jimenez? No. Uh, adjunct faculty, Deborah Thorson? Approved. <coughs> My vote is a yes. Uh, going to um, our admin, Reggie Bolton? Approved. Jennifer Aiken, agent, great employees. And Richard Carver. Perspective, and, and I'm here to just talk about the, the EODAC charge, um, and particularly the, the committee membership proposal that uh, has um, increasing the classified staff uh, representation to equal the faculty representation. Um, before getting to that, though, I, I hope that when you're looking at the faculty uh, representation, if you could please make it by pathway. Um, that's what the Senate has done you know, already. Um, I, it would be nice if you put that in there. <laughs> um, but personally, okay, just me, then you know, I support the proposal to have the number of classified staff equal to the faculty number. Um, the classified staff that I've worked with on various committees, um, I've served here in my 26 years at the BC, have all provided valuable insights um, and have felt free to speak their mind. And they have shared their opinions. Um, 
Also, the, the classified staff at BC have received training in critical thinking through their own college education, uh, many of them from our own faculty here at BC. If a reasoned argument can be made for a particular action, then I believe that the classified staff would come to the same conclusions as any reasonable faculty member would. Um, the argument that I've heard against making the classified representation equal to the, the faculty representation has focused on the desire to ensure the faculty power to override any classified objection. And that argument assumes that the classified staff would be intimidated by administration to vote a certain way. You know, they're supervisors. Um, that belief does strike me as a bit elitist, and it's not congruent with a committee that has equal opportunity in its name. Um, a proposed action should be decided <coughs> upon through a reasoned argument and not through numerical domination. Um, furthermore, EODAC is a recommending body. It can, it can propose, uh, propose policy or procedure changes as can any committee. But the Education Code does assign responsibilities of minimum qualifications and equivalency processes, faculty hiring, faculty evaluation and tenure review, administrative retreat rights, and faculty service areas to the Academic Senate. Now, for some of those areas, there's also the collective bargaining um, agent, you know, our faculty union who's involved in negotiating those things. So policies and procedures in these areas, they have to be approved by the Academic Senate, which is why there is a regular reporting out to the Academic Senate um, noted in the proposed charge, um, as well as in the Senate bylaws. We've got that, you know, as well. The, so that I think, you know, if there was something that maybe the, the faculty felt a little bit hesitant about, well, okay, Again, it's a recommending body. It's going to go to the Academic Senate. It's also going to College Council for final actual you know, approval of things. Um, now, the proposed charge, and this is the one that um, was proposed at, in April. I, we have that, I guess, in our thing here. Um, that was proposed in April. Um, it does have a, a line stating advisor to the college president, which um, I think has led some to believe that EODAC will be able to sidestep Academic Senate and go straight to the President on matters that impact areas given to the Senate and Education Code and, and also board policy. Um, now, based on my discussions with the previous uh, faculty chair, I believe the advisor to the College President line in that proposed charge comes from the, the dash arrow. Uh, that was in the uh, decision-making documents, decision-making process graphic. Now that dashed arrow carries the same weight as all the other dashed arrows between all the other bubbles on up to the, the college president, including all students, all employees, and community members. Um, I, I would recommend that you either delete that line or we can add it to every single committee. Um, task force, work group, student club, CTE advisory group, employee group, and advocacy group in the community. Um, hopefully, you know, any college president would understand the precedence given to the Senate by education code and board policy, you know, on those particular areas. Um, so I, I see that advisor two line as being sort of an unnecessary distraction. Call it like a red herring. Um, and finally, I do also recommend that uh, you add in your uh, in, in the membership box um, a statement that the quorum does not include vacant positions. We have that in a number of other ones. Sometimes that can mean that you know you, you don't have enough representatives. Then it's like, okay, well, you you can never quote get to in a quorum. <laughs> but uh, if you have vacant positions, they shouldn't count against you so you can get the work done. So I would encourage you to put that in there. Um, and once you finally get the, the, the charge you know, settled in here, it goes to the Academic Senate and to College Council for final you know, official approval. And, um, and if you were to increase the, the classified representation and then the other groups as well, that would, that would take effect you know, that semester. You don't have to wait until the entire next year. 
to, to get it done. All right, so that, I just wanted to, to share those uh, comments with you, and I'm gonna then head back <laughs> to my uh, planetary and field trip, so. Thank you, Nick. Go for it, you hang on for one minute, so I make sure I put, I'm capturing what you're saying. Okay. So he, he's fundamentally making three recommendations and I'll summarize them here. So if someone wants to make a recommendation to amend the, the, the chart, like the charts that we're considering today for those, and then we can consider those, that would be okay. If not, that's okay too. So recommendation one, remove the rhetoric that says advisor two, and then says the president. The recommendation number two was um, to add some sort of asterisk somewhere in the charge that says that you don't, quorum doesn't have to include, shouldn't include vacancies. And then three, to add that the membership of faculty based on pathways. Yes, so to do that, I was also, uh, um, okay, uh, yeah, and I was in support of the idea of having a classified representation being equal to, um, to the um, faculty representation. Um, but I guess that's not a formal recommendation. <laughs> Thank you. I just okay. wanted to make sure I didn't want to mischaracterize. Vicki, you were going to say something? Um, no, I just wanted to thank Vic, and then we can review the charge and decide what amendments we need to make or not. Yeah, so if you want to just take a, a couple more minutes to look at the proposed one, okay. again, not the 2019 one, the proposed one that's listed as a draft that's been in your um, EODAC website since last year under the last minute for a while and then I put it in the description of the meeting. Um, I was unaware exactly which charge we'd be doing today because I know we've got several that we've looked at. And I also produced an alternative charge that I think we should consider. And so I'd like to submit that as an alternative option. Okay, so what we'll do first is deal with this one and then we can move forward with another, another one. So the first thing I would ask is, so we're dealing with this charge right now. So we either need a motion to, like the things that, that Nick says, and I can re-articulate that and say, like, we want to consider altering it this way, and then we can take a vote to approve or to not approve. And then if that's done, if someone wants to bring another one forward, we can do that. But we have to follow This would be an this amendment first. just like this one is. They're both amendments, right? You said an entirely new charge. Well, so is the one that's proposed. It's an entirely new charge. But this isn't a new, yeah. So this is not a new charge. So we, we need to address a little background. So in the spring, this committee approved this charge. Everybody who was a voting member approved this charge, and that is how we have operated all year long. That being said, as a classified representative, I have people in the room who were not able to vote because we keep going back and trying to undermine what has happened in the past. The charge before, we are just trying to work with Academic Senate and say, okay, this is an academic senate rule that you look at your charge every year. It's not a classified rule and it's not a management rule, but so that we can just finally address what you feel is responsible to your group. We're saying let's look at the charge at hand that has already been approved and then let's vote on it to move forward. Again, my members can't vote we keep marginalizing the work that's been done, undermining, and it is counterproductive. Um, and so, that being said, as far as the recommendations from Nick, I am in support of two and three. The committee does have regular communications with the president, so I would like to keep in there advising to the president. So those are the recommendations I would I would be willing to amend or motion to amend to this charge we have here. Okay. So we have a motion on the ground. Do I have so to be clear, what she's motioning is to uh, mix point number two, which is that to insert some language that says that we don't have form does not have to include vacancies. That just makes it easier for us to get some things done when it's obvious, especially with the path. I don't have to explain it. You all get it. Number three was add membership of faculty based on their pathway. So that's the motion on the board. Is there a second? I said this. Are you taking any comments? I feel like I'm asking this. 
So the motion on the board right now, what we have to go with is the motion, which is right now the one we're voting on mm -hmm. is not that one. The one we're voting on right now is to either you agree or disagree or you want to abstain from adding the language that quorum doesn't include vacant positions and adding that the membership of faculty should be based on pathway. So, so that's what's on so the, right now. So the we only can do another one, but this is the one we have to do right. right now because this is one that was articulated and, and seconded. Okay, so I'm sorry because I'm running as fast as I can keep up. So the one that's the working document that is not the current one, you, it, we're working off the proposed one. Yeah, we're working off the proposed one that was voted on last year. In and the so OTS. we're going to change the proposed one to do what Nick said. Yes. Yeah, so Take yes. off advisor to the president, be, add the quorum language, the, the, and... The most, so the current one that we're working off of today is the one we voted with, but the one we're looking at right now to make an amendment to is the proposal that is on the email okay. that was sent to you, I'm the one that was approved last year by this okay. committee, but didn't go through Senate and College Council. But it went to eBoard. Well, but it went to eBoard, and so we're trying to. We're yeah. amending the draft to keep talking about the draft. Well, no, we're, no, we're the motion is to accept two of Nick's recommendations. recommendations. Right, but accept those recommendations to amend the draft so that we can keep talking about the draft to see if we're going to say, yes, this is the yes. new one. Uh -huh. All right, so, <coughs> I, 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 sorry. because one of these recommendations is already in the proposed draft, and, and you guys are saying it's two, but it's there because isn't that we're classified? The faculty um, is preferred represented from each of the guided uh, pathway teams, so isn't that the language already in here? So, so I, I'm just, so we're in the language Which page. Oh, that's under membership. Under membership. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the, I think yeah, that's yeah. the, the double-sided draft. I just got the hard copy. Yeah, so the preferred recommendation for the yes. BC guided path team. So I, I was confused. <laughs> it's right there. Yeah. So, so we only yeah. need the one that he recommended. Right. Right. You're absolutely right. Okay. So let's take away his recommendation number two, and we stand that is that acceptable. And we're also taking away the recommendation to remove the advisor to the president. No, that was not a motion. No. So the motion was those two. They're okay with taking off the number two, but so now we're we're just moving on with number three because number two is not necessary. So number three, just to clarify, add member. No, we're getting rid of number three, not number two. Number two is at rhetoric that says that we don't need to include our vacancies in quorums. Right. So can I, I'm going to go person by person, and we can take a vote. You had something? Yeah, just just question for Vicky. Um, Vicky, what is your rationale for not removing the college president? For, for, you know, no, that's not what we're at. We're on the part where we're voting on this item, so we have to stick to this. We can go to that next, but we got to we got to okay. stick to this because the motion was made. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go with uh, the student, which is Anthony. Do you um, approve, negate, or abstain? Aye. Okay. Maria. Approve. Angela. Approve. Uh, Dominica. Approve. Just making those two changes to mix it to this. David. Foreign language. Abstain. Okay. And then we're sometimes. Marad is going to be approved. Rep. So uh, Teresa, basically. which is yeah. Lily. Uh, no. Uh, Joe. Awesome. Catherine Jones. No. Harlan Hunter. Approved. Matt Garrett. Which amendment are we on? We're doing the one where it adds a language that we don't have. Do we? We shouldn't Corn. use vacancies gotcha. against four. Um, abstain. Motion to amend. To extend by 10 minutes. Uh, move to extend the meeting by 10 minutes. Okay. Do you want to give 
proxy to anyone, or do you want to? I haven't even decided who my proxy is. Well, if you want to think about it while we're doing this, that's okay. Okay, five minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So we have a motion for ten. Could we do? Is there anyone second it? Second. Okay. Second is Mena. And then, can we just do all those in favor? Say aye. 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 All those opposed. All those abstaining. Okay. Motion to amend. <laughs> okay. I'd, I'd like to motion to amend the alternative um, res, uh, charge. Oh, okay. Hold on. So we're moving for a 10-minute extension. Right now it's 11.32, so it'll be 11.42 unless there's another motion on the ground. Um, we have an individual that would like to get this done in the next five. Question, is there a proxy here that I can use? Yeah, you can give your proxy to me or any other faculty member here if you'd like. Okay, you've got my proxy. Okay, okay but I'm happy. Okay. Um, okay, Matthew. Yes, um, so I printed off an alternative draft which is more in common with the currently approved draft than the proposed draft that we're looking at. So you said it's a whole new draft. Well, it's actually closer to the original. So, so okay. it's a whole set of, of amendments just like the proposed one we're looking at is a I whole totally set of that. amendments. I just have to finish this draft first. We have to have like a final, I, I, see if there's anything else that someone wants to amend to this one. And then if not, if you want to vote on it, get rid of it. I don't think it, that's whatever, correct procedure. We, we can go with another draft because otherwise we have competing drafts and we have to take yeah. care of it one at a time. There's definitely stuff on this draft I want to talk about, if that's where you're going. Yes, that's where we're going. <laughs> All right. So if so, we're dealing with this draft. We have that amendment. That amendment went through, so we will add the the talk about the vacancy. Um, if it's vacant, not to be used against quorum. By the way, the reason that was there is because that's currently what we're dealing with on the committee. There's a vacancy for one of our pathways. Some that didn't want that to be keeping anybody from getting work done. A representation. So now is there any other recommendations um, or proposals for the draft that we're talking about? Okay, so with the new draft and comparing the new to the old um, and some other things, I see both mission creep and leaving people behind. And so that concerns me. I don't have any problem whatsoever with having a racial climate task force. Maybe next year we'll have a gender climate task force. Maybe the year after that we'll have a religious climate task force. To me, that's part of the mission we're leaving behind because the other versions talk about all students, employees. That language is now gone. Um, in my other life, BC, prior to BC, uh, heavily involved in litigation. The two most expensive employment litigation cases I was involved in were religion was number one and disability was right behind it. And I don't see accessibility. When you look at the language that comes out from the Department of Labor, it's a fat paragraph of all of the various things that fall into the equal opportunity, the EEOC stuff, and, and now, okay, we've expanded it to be equal in opportunity and diversity. Great, but we're leaving people behind when we cut out this language. And I'm strongly opposed to, I get where it's going, I don't oppose the effort, but I'm strongly opposed to the new draft that adds the word anti-racist because that's now what I see as the mission creep is pushing it to be more into, well, really, EE, you know, the equal employment and opportunity and all of that stuff is really mostly about race. And it's not, and I think that's problematic. So there's my, my whole two cents. Mm -hmm. So I have four uh, proposed amendments. Um, one of them goes in line with uh, Kathleen. One is, on that first paragraph, uh, I propose to change it back. Right now it says, uh, demonstrate a commitment to greater uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and anti-racism. So I propose to change it back to what we had before, 
So it said, demonstrate a commitment to greater diversity and inclusion for all students, employees, um, and the um, community at large on the basis of that's just a more inclusive statement. But by going the anti-racism route, you know, we're, we're ideologically excluding uh, uh, groups of people uh, because not everybody buys into the anti-racism uh, rhetoric. Um, so on that note, also take out the, um, so the second one is under scope of um, authority. We have a conflict with DODAC being an advisory committee and then on the scope of um, authority, we're saying that we're going to create, develop, and put into action practices and policies. So that seems to give us to give ourselves the, the the authority to create, implement, and put into action policies. So um, I think that the language should be will concentrate on advising the appropriate uh, bodies on the creation, revision. Uh, implementation. So we are still an advisory committee. We well, shouldn't be one second I'm just trying to make sure I yeah, sorry, sorry. I'm going to yeah, articulate yeah, this in like a much shorter way. So I'm going you're adjusting the scope to so the first point was adjusting the language back to the first draft. Yes. So 2019 draft. Yes. Your second point is to adjust the scope specifically tell me what you want removed. Um so say we'll we'll concentrate on advising. So what do um, you want removed though? No, just just add add the word advising because it says that that we're creating, right? So I I want to say advising on the creation of, you know, and then the emphasis is on the fact that we don't have the power to create to create, revise, and put into action policies. We only advise, right? Like, um, and then um, and then uh, remove anti-racism for that for that statement. Just uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion remove anti-racism yes. where specifically? From the scope of authority. Okay. Um, and then finally we need to uh, chat about membership. You know, the, the, it, it's a big problem because nobody wants to disenfranchise anybody. Mm -hmm. But that argument cuts both ways. Because by doing this membership, you're now disenfranchising faculty. Faculty went on the on the on the previous membership. We went with a nine out of fifteen. I'm sorry, but you you're making a motion to yeah. make an amendment, so I need you to just okay. tell me so what you, I you need. So I make the amendment to keep the membership as is. So your point is 15. to keep the 2019. Yes. Those two yeah. Apologies. Point of clarification. Okay. Removing anti-racism. There was one more she missed that was on uh, the last yes. bullet of the first. That's what I'm asking if she wants to include that. She's got all the other ones. Yeah. No, I, I said four, so I, I, I did three. I think that's my fourth one. I, I, okay. I, I had it down. Yes, on the communicates with. There, uh, there it is. So that's my fourth one. The communicates with? Yes. So I have you, your first one is replacing the, the language back to the 2019 version in the very beginning of the opening. Yes. The second one is the scope, add the word advising, and remove yes. the word anti-racism. Yes. That's still number two. Number three was remove anti-racism from communicate with. And number four is keep the membership. Of 2019 membership. Yes. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Discussion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, so now we can have discussion. Please keep in mind that we are very close on time if we can make it concise. Okay, what if we can't? Oh, go ahead. I have something because I'm a little, I'm, this is my first one. And I'm confused why you wouldn't want the classified staff to be equal to faculty. I'm, I'm confused, and you're talking about disenfranchising their employees here, and they represent a large part, because some of you wouldn't be able to do what you do without your classified, so why wouldn't they equally be represented on a committee like this why would you want to disenfranchise them by keeping your numbers larger than theirs? I'm, I'm, I, I, that's what I heard when you said that because your the faculty number would be larger than the classified number, but why? Because to be honest, if you took all your classified out, how hurt would you be? I'm just, I'm yeah, just. I can, I can, I can, I can address that. The college cannot run with any one of its pieces. So you I take out classified, it cannot run. Mm -hmm. You take out faculty, it mm -hmm. cannot run. You take out stuff, you take out the custodian, yes. it cannot run. Yes. Right? So it, 
but the argument is that also Nick Strobel brought in also, you know, the, the, you know the, there's a reason why we have tenure, and that's to protect freedom of ideas. So the argument is that classify, uh, you know, it, you have pressure to vote a certain way because your jobs are on the line. So with faculty, the tenure is meant to protect us from that. Then that's I not that's, that's, that's not equity. That's, that's not, not equity. That's not, equity. That's that's not what this committee is about. And I totally disagree with you on that one because well, that 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 comment to me is not cool because that's totally disrespectful. So Angie was the next it. person to have her hand up. I'm gonna say as a as a um, classified employee who's been on this campus for 30 years worked with the college, various committees I serve on, with other faculty members. I was completely insulted by that comment when you said that we don't participate or we can't have a voice. No, that's what that's what I heard. But what I'm saying is that classified as a whole, we play a large part. We're just not custodians. We work directly with students. We help them. We bring them in. We support them. We are on the ground with them. And we know where we reflect and what we do with them. So what I heard, what I heard when you said, what I heard when you said what you said was that our voices should not be counted. We are equal to all parts, administrative, faculty. Our voices should be heard. I didn't right. all around. Right. That's yes. not what I said. That's what I said. That's what I said. It's easier to find classified. And what I'm going to say that we're not, we're, and, we're, and I'm going to say with longevity as well. It's very difficult, if you look at our contract, very difficult to fire us mm -hmm. who have been here a long term. It's extremely difficult. Extremely. extremely. Right. So, <laughs> and I resent the fact that you can say that I lack the capability of speaking and thinking myself. When you need that is help offensive. Garrett over here to get I you to your fourth point. That. That's what I you said. You said I, I can vow the intimidation. That and is unacceptable. The next person is Reggie. So, because I got to got to go help the students mm -hmm. um, but again here we go mm -hmm. and it's, it's and again we talk about a committee and we, you just made a point that we want to include everybody yeah. but that statement just devalued a whole group of people I don't think that's what she meant no that, that's, I, that's, that's, what she said. that's what she said I, 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 and again it's just like the taking out the anti-racism yeah the point that I think people are trying to make is when you take that out it only a, it, it's it's not an issue because you're not affected by it mm -hmm. just like a woman it's you can say that for a woman and say hey I've been harassing it's not an issue into a woman until she's affected by it I am if affected by anti-racism so whether whether we're sitting in this room and we're doing it again here we go we're gonna spend all our time arguing back and forth over mindsets and those students that just walked out will continue to suffer. Mm -hmm. So we can do what we, we can right. take out what we want, we can do whatever we want, but this is going to keep coming back to the same fact. Because mm -hmm. you just brought up uh, people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. You're right, we should include them. Right. We should include women. Right. We should include, There's listen, no hold up what I'm saying. This is my floor, you had your point. What I'm saying is if we spend all our time in this room talking about these specifics, right. we'll never get any I, I agree. We have and that's what's happening because every time something comes up, here comes a specific. And again, that point just devalued a group of people and that's where anti-racism comes from. Right. Devaluing groups of people. Right. So whether we pull it or not, pull it out, or don't discuss it, we're going to devalue somebody. The point is the mindset in this room should be to move this forward to help everybody on campus. Because anything we propose will help meet the need of the students and the faculty right. and the staff. Because that statement was a strong statement to a group of people. And that's not okay. And then to make the statement tenure gives us academic freedom. Wow. Gee, I'm a fact I'm a former faculty member. I would never think that. I would never think my tenure gives me the ability to devalue another person regardless of race, gender, color, disability on this campus. That's a mindset. And that mindset's in this room. So we're not voting, are we today? Yeah, I I know we, are voting. Voting. We, are voting. we need to vote because I, I gotta go. Okay. Okay. I have a motion to vote on what her proposal is so we can get going. Okay, okay. there's a motion to vote. Can I amend it? No. 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 Let's move okay. forward. It's 1147. Okay. Let's go. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. We're over. It, we are, 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 we
So I need to remind Cutting discussion short. Replacement back to the I would like to have right. part of the discussion. The, we did today. the second is the scope asking and advising. The third recommendation of amendment was remove the anti-racism language in the area that says communicates with. But no, it was two. And uh, the fourth one was keeping the 2019 membership intact. All those, I'm going to, just, I'm going to do it one at a time. Say it again. Say it again so I know what I'm voting on. Okay. So, our first one was the first sentence in the, the draft, changing it back to the 2019 version. Her second proposal is that the scope um, in there, add the word advising and remove anything about anti-racism. The third piece, remove anti-racism for the area that says communicates to. Or fourth, is keep 2019 membership to reject, therefore, the membership that's proposed in this draft for the 2022. That is a proposal that is on, on right now. So if you vote to approve, you vote to approve all of it. If you vote no, you vote to negate all of it. If you vote to abstain, you're saying you do not want a voice on this one. All right? So I'm going to go person by person because and I don't it, think this is not possible to revise her motion. No. Somebody no. can't no. can't make another motion no. to We're before we vote so that we no. never vote. We are at look. We are we are at time and we need to move forward. So, so you put a motion forward. It was accepted. I'm we had a discussion. To make it easier. No 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 no. no, 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 no but, but, then, yeah. but you're doing the same thing that you're accusing. It's like, I'm who not. cares about time? I'll sit here till 3 o'clock this afternoon if I have to, to get this done. No, no, we no, can no, still do that. Not. After we finish this vote, we can vote again to extend time. But I can't do another amendment or a vote to extend time in the middle of a motion that's already been had, but the discussion has been had, and we're over time. I'll bet my so retirement, the amendment, it. is going to make everybody happy. I bet it won't. I bet it won't. Let's okay. Let's just this vote. is the amendment. Whoever abstains, whoever... <laughs> Maria, for a person who's been working in student Here's services for 20 yes. years, yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, we are so going to no, we are going to. So you're voting no, to, to no. approve what she said. Her no. amendments, or are you voting no? Or no, or any? I'm right. voting no, no. because okay. yes, yes, we need okay. to okay. go. Angela, yes, no. Dominica, no. Vicky, no. David, yes. Marad, no. Teresa, which is Lily. I can come back. Joe Saldivar. Catherine Jones. Abstain. Harlan Hunter. I'm a yes. And then You're Matt. Yes. Me. Matt. <laughs> uh, Matt Garrett. Yes. Amena. Abstain. Deborah Thorson. No. Drea is a no. Reggie. No. Jennifer Aiken. No. Agent. Sorry. It's okay. Richard. No. Okay. So that motion does not pass. If someone wants to put another map, uh, I'm moving motion, the exact same thing Jimena said, except so the committee configuration. This. So she had first. first. So I move we accept. First of all, if we want to continue, I second. because time ran out, I'm so sorry. I would need the motion to, to extend the time. That's part of the problem. Motion to extend. Extend the time. I gotta go. I gotta go. Oh, we got meetings. Yeah. Yeah. I, I make a motion we adjourn. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, let's make a motion Can to adjourn. Can we come back to this? Yeah. Again? It should be the only thing we do. It should have been the only thing we did today. This, it, the the I had to bring what I had to bring today. I had no... I had to do that. That was put on me from e board, from our Senate e board. That was not choice based from me. So, do we, do we want to extend the time? There. Though We're all almost those there. in favor for another 20 minutes? No. Aye. Say aye. No. Aye. Aye. We're almost all there. All those saying no? No. No. All those abstaining? The no's have it. So we'll close it. Andrea? What are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, he used to work for the campus. Oh, yeah. You were fired. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.